The history of Britney Spears' perfumes is a surprisingly confusing one, as so little information is available online. But there is still so much we can learn from the license. Obviously, morality and the public perception of that, but also considering they released their most recent fragrance last year, the incredible job the team has done at creating legacy away from the celebrity endorsement. Thank you to Scentbird for sponsoring this video. Scentbird is a fragrance subscription service that allows you to try new designer fragrances for $17 a month if you're living in the US or Canada, including one of the Britney Spears perfumes that we will be talking about in this video. Fragrance, to me, has always been a particularly personal thing because I've always struggled to find a scent that would be signature to me. Of course, back when I was a young'un, we had to pay through the teeth to have our perfumes read by a professional or we had to buy endless and very expensive full bottles in order to find exactly the right perfume for me. Fortunately now, that's a hell of a lot easier with the Scentbird quiz on their website that does all of that costly service for free, finding a whole bunch of perfect perfumes for you to experiment, try and easily compare using their main scent notes, but all at a cut down cost as some of these options without Scentbird could cost you between $150 to $500. $100. So make sure to click the link below to visit Scentbird's website or scan the QR code and use my code UNDERSKIN for 50% off your first month at Scentbird. That's only about $8 from your first month. So thank you again to Scentbird for sponsoring this video. Incredibly, considering how famous Britney Spears was personally in 2004, there is very little surviving information about the launch of her brand. We know from the Elizabeth Arden 2004 annual report that this was planned in May 2004 and was penned as a fragrance, makeup and skincare line at that time. But to the public, in fact, pretty much the only piece of news we have from before launch is this article from WWD that states how desirable a Britney Spears license was at the time, that Elizabeth Arden won the bid for the license and some of their plans for the launch. We'll come back to the launch in a second because continued on page 7 comes some strong insights into the deal that was signed and the planned product positioning, which all would have been in planning stages when Elizabeth Arden won the bid. The deal was pretty standard for a celebrity deal at the time. It was a 5-year, 5% royalty contract, plus we know from later reports that she received $52 million for endorsement as well. Of course, today she probably could have negotiated higher, given that she was at the height of her fame when this was penned, but this whole wave of celebrity cosmetics was still fairly new, with Jennifer Lopez really revamping the space in 2002 after releasing her wildly successful perfume with Coty. In fact, this whole genre of cosmetics was only newly popularized from that point, with CNN going on to quote Glamour magazine's beauty director Felicia Milovitz in saying, this season is all about the celebrity fragrances and celebrity endorsements. Going on, the article continues by pointing out that even the least expecting celebrities like Donald Trump or Maria Sharapova were getting fragrances and bigger pop culture stars like Paris Hilton were pushing up their fragrance launches to meet the trend. When this information is merged with the fact that Elizabeth Arden themselves were in a little bit of a rocky place, it makes sense purely from a financial perspective to conceive this perfume as a cash grab, both for Spears and her team, and for Elizabeth Arden. But that's not to say that this was not a very well-conceived cash grab. For Arden, they knew that their demographic was older than Spears is and were using the perfume range to target the 17 to 35-year-old range that they previously had nothing or little for. Effectively for Arden, this meant that they were simultaneously introducing their high product quality to a younger audience, while purposely avoiding self-cannibalization with an IP they knew would do well. It was a very smart license for them to enter in on, though I suppose that could have been said with almost any young celebrity doing a license with Elizabeth Arden at that time. Eventually though, the first perfume, Curious, was launched towards the Christmas season of 2004 and immediately it was welcomed by the Britney Spears fandom. Lots of school-aged children were buying into it as their first fragrance and this had a huge impact on Elizabeth Arden as a company. Net sales were up 6.1% and gross profit was up 14.8% according to their 2005 annual report, which largely attributes all of this success to the Britney Spears Curious Fragrance, 
Firstly, because it had a higher margin and a lower advertising cost, likely because of the celebrity endorsement, though they did also have magazine and TV ads. Secondly, because as the product was meant not for the connoisseur of fragrance, they had both a lower manufacturing cost and a lower price, which was good for the target market of a younger consumer. And thirdly, because of Spears' global fame, they saw a massive increase in sales outside the US, expanding the reach of the Elizabeth Arden brand. The perfume was a real phenomenon. According to InStyle, it was the top-selling fragrance of 2004, netting over $100 million in sales. As a result, it was a no-brainer to follow up the successful perfume with another. Britney Spears' Fantasy Fantasy was released in 2005 and also hit the bestseller list, grossing $30 million in the first three weeks alone, a massive jump on the $30 million in the first three months that Curious garnered. This was then followed in October with the release of cosmetics, including a body souffle and an eyeshadow palette for Fantasy and a body shimmer for Curious, which I think released November 2005. By 2006, both perfume lines also had sequels, In Control Curious and Midnight Fantasy, all released before her infamous breakdown in November 2006, in which she shaved her head and attacked a car with an umbrella. Now, this video, like all my videos, is an analysis of a brand, not the people endorsing them. But unfortunately, the history of this perfume line is tied quite heavily to Britney's celebrity endorsement. You see, the one common thing in celebrity lines is that they're nearly only ever as popular as the celebrity who is endorsing them. We know that we are buying their products primarily because of them. So when they fall out of favour or they fall out of the public eye in general, their brands also begin to fall off. But this didn't really happen for Spears. Because as the public became fascinated with her public persona, the media was unrelenting in photographing her mental decline, and generally, we as the public were very unkind to a person who was clearly calling out for help. I wouldn't usually touch on this in my videos because it's not about the brand directly. But in this case, it was exactly this media vitriol that affected her perfume license. You see, Elizabeth Arden, now with a major cash cow on their hands, didn't want to let it go telling reporters in early 2006 that they would continue to support Miss Spears by not breaking the contract. In truth, her breakdown, her very public breakdown, had caused sales to rise 20% on their already majorly profitable cash cow, and they just didn't want to lose that what was a major profit driver. To quote Wesley Morris, New York Times critic, on the Framing Britney Spears documentary, Nobody was talking about mental health when Britney Spears was going through all of that stuff in public. There was too much money to be made off of her suffering. In hindsight, this seems unethical, given what we know of her management today. But at the time, this was seen as a good thing. It was a way for her fans to support Britney in her time of need, and the decision came across good of Elizabeth Arden not to drop her when she was clearly suffering. Plus, there's simply no way for us to know if Elizabeth Arden knew anything that was going on with Spears' team at that time anyway, nor is there any way for us to know that, hypothetically, if she was dropped, if it would further cause more unwanted media attention. As a result, in the same year, they released two more perfumes, Believe, Curious Heart, and Hidden Fantasy in 2008, around the same time that Britney was put under her conservatorships. Her conservatorships aren't my area of expertise, but in this case, it's important to note that because of her conservatorship, her business dealings were compromised. So I contacted Jake at the channel Deep Dive because they made a seven-part docuseries on the whole thing, and he was also actually walking in the Free Britney movement to walk me through it, and he said, So there are two conservatorships. There yeah. was conservatorship of the person and then conservatorship of the estate. And so the conservatorship of the estate is the one that dealt with all of the business dealings. And a lot of that was actually muddled because there was not really any checks or balances. So Britney's conservatorship was really different than a lot of conservatorships. 
um, because it didn't really get checked on for the full 15 years that it was intact. So a lot of the stuff that was happening, like there was some really sketchy stuff where um, allegedly Jamie Spears tried to like sign over the Britney Spears trademark from himself as a conservator to himself as a personal individual and like things like that, that are just like um, kind of make it an unprecedented case. So the conservatorship to make it simple term, the conservatorship uh, sort of controlled the conservatorship of the estate controlled every single aspect of Britney Spears as a business, any sort of money she was getting that includes music dealings, any sort of perfumes, anything like that. Um, any, anything, it would all just go through that one team for the business. Sorry, her dad tried to get the Britney Spears trademark under his name. Allegedly, um, there, it's really sketchy. You know, there was some back and forth with like, um, even during researching it that we couldn't quite make out exactly what it was, but basically the Britney brands LLC and like a bunch of the different, I think it was baby one more Mark LLC. It was a certain LLC that Jamie Spears took out. And, uh, there was some really sketchy stuff with Andrew wallet, the conservator at the time and Jamie Spears, where, they allegedly tried to sign over some stuff that really wasn't like theirs. Okay, That's kind so of like it's still it, under her then. Oh, under her estate, yes, which they control. I see. So yes. So because of the conservatorship, Britney Spears no longer had volition over which different projects or which licenses she could license out her name to. This would mark a change in the dealings between Spears's team and Elizabeth Arden. Because now in 2010, with the hugely popular Radiance fragrance just released, Spears' father requested that Elizabeth Arden send Britney's earnings to Britney directly in a move that cut out their broker, Branson's partners, who had just negotiated and connected the deal back in 2004. This is illegal, and was clearly a way for the Spears team to milk more money out of the deal than they were already getting. As a result, Branson's partners sued both Britney and her father for $10 million in 2011. This became quite a long and ugly battle, with Spears not being able to meet court dates and unable to be deposed because of her conservatorship. Again, in hindsight, we know that Spears was not really privy to what was being conducted on her behalf, but at the time, Branson was convinced that, quote, Ms. Spears is competent to testify and she is the key witness to this case. She has direct knowledge of the operative agreement at the heart of this dispute and has signed each of them. Eventually, by 2012, they settled out of court for an undisclosed sum, and the Britney Spears perfume brand would keep pushing out new fragrances to the tune of $30 million a year. In fact, because the perfumes had been continually selling so well, in the same year, 2012, Elizabeth Arden would reframe their focus as a company to meet this celebrity demand. They decided, according to their 2012 annual report, to focus specifically on the brands that were turning the most profit and using them for longer-term, more predictable sales. So this wasn't about growth at this point. They were just trying to stabilize the already loyal customers to keep the profits coming in which makes sense purely from a statistical perspective, as Spears' buzzworthiness was nowhere near what it was in 2004 or even during her 2007 breakdown. This they would do with what's called product extension. This is illustrated by use of the product lifecycle chart, and to use Curious as an example, when it's released, it sells massively, but slowly over time, sales begin to drop. But... By releasing a new product under the same branding, they can capitalize on the established branding of the product line to extend the value created. This they had already done with Curious with In Control and Curious Heart, and with Fantasy with Midnight Fantasy, Hidden Fantasy, and Circus Fantasy. Actually, given how much more focused the brand extension was on fantasy branded perfumes, I think it's safe to assume that this quote from the 2012 annual report was directly referring to fantasy that would go on to have 25 different iterations, 
making it an incredible study of product curation and interestingly causing Elizabeth Arden to no longer approach it as a celebrity fragrance, but as a heritage label by 2015. They recognized which of their product lines had the greatest standalone brand value and used the power of that to make longevity of the brand as a whole extend. Furthermore, Britney was also rather active in promoting the perfumes in her work as well. To quote Rag.com, the very first shot of her music video for Circus features adjacent bottles of Curious and Fantasy, Work Bitch showcases Fantasy Twist, Hold It Against Me flashes to a gleaming bottle of radiance, even just a few months ago when Spears released a sneak peek of her new album Glory on Instagram, it was wrapped in an ad for her new fragrance, Private Show. No other celebrity has gone to such lengths to incorporate fragrance into her identity as Britney Spears has. Of course, I mentioned before that celebrity products are usually only as popular as the celebrity that endorses them. And this is right. But clearly they knew this and were using Britney's personal success to sell a piece of her. And yet at this point, because it has been going for so long, Fantasy specifically had really become its own heritage brand that was strong enough to have a following of its own slightly removed from the Britney Spears fanbase. In fact, in all of this time, they had only released two new Britney Spears perfume names, Private Show in 2016 that had just the one extender and Prerogative in 2018 that had three. So, it's likely that Fantasy's own loyal fanbase is really why it's had the longevity that it has seen and why it continues to sell to this day, with the most recent Jungle Fantasy only being released last year. But of course, we cannot discuss her celebrity impact on the fragrances without discussing the Free Britney movement, because unfortunately, much like her infamous 2007 breakdown before it, it had a massive positive effect on sales. According to this article from CosmeticsBusiness.com, sales of Spears' fragrance range have more than doubled with an overall increase of 155% year-on-year, according to online retailer Fragrance Direct. Scents from the fantasy collection have been among our best sellers, seeing an uplift of up to 335% in comparison to February 2019. And we've also seen a 48% sales increase for the fragrance Believe, which could be a sign that fans are showing their support to Britney after watching the new documentary. This in reference to the Framing Britney Spears documentary that had only been released weeks before this article went live. I rewatched it for research in this, and it doesn't mention the cosmetics line directly at all, just a passing use of the fragrance ads, so all of this intake was purely just from Britney Spears being a buzzworthy topic once more. It was clearly a massive upturn in sales for Arden and for Spears, and obviously encouraged them to continue releasing fragrances, including three in 2020, three in 2021, two in 2022, and one in 2023, clearly following the curve of interest in the Free Britney movement and the fact that she hasn't released new music or done much press since then. Unfortunately, the one thing I could not find answers for was if, because of the conservatorship, Britney herself was really making any of the money from the license of her name, or at least if she was seeing any of the money from the license. Her brother in 2021 said the perfumes grossed 100 billion US dollars in this podcast interview with As Not Seen on TV, which I feel is probably an overestimation, and other figures estimate that she has made 50 million dollars a year on the license, which I again feel is absent of her initial 5% or potentially more if they negotiated up from this, which they probably have done. I did also read Britney's autobiography, The Woman in Me, on Everand for research for this video, and she also doesn't say much in that either, other than the fact that she had no access to her money at all, that she earned less than her father did in this time, and that he was paying people around her almost half a million dollars to keep her away from her finances. So really, the figures for her personally are a bit up in the air, and there doesn't seem to be any definitive information on how much of it goes to Spears herself. So I went back to Jake to get a little bit more clarification. Do we know if Brittany saw any of the money from the perfume deal at all? So really, that's what they're figuring out now. I think, I mean, I think in, ter in light terms, we can say that she probably saw like from way back when, I mean, 
don't uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I believe the perfume started in 2003, 2004 time period. So that would have been before the conservatorship started. Yeah. Um, so 2004. She definitely may. Yeah. So she definitely saw some money from that because the conservatorship wasn't in place yet. However, afterwards, like after 2008 and circus and all of that, I mean, they actually really started to go more ham on the perfumes. I would say like it turned from just like kind of like any other star, like Katy Perry, Lady Gaga, um, even one direction, Justin Bieber, like you have a couple fragrances to like, now she had like nine and then like 10 and then like 15. And now she has, I don't even know how many. And um, I do think she probably realistically saw some money from it, but she should have been wealthier. I mean, who was mismanaging her money at that point? It's kind of the same thing with Britney. Like at that point, Britney Spears was worth like, I would say like, I think, want to say like i don't know the exact figures like an eighth of what her perfume empire was estimated at and it's like yeah. what is even going on there yeah i wish there was more answers to this i like to work with facts and unfortunately this case has been it's, it's... no it's really not the facts that you can really go on with this case are britney spears had no from the years 2008 to 2020 two or 2021 i don't or 2023 whenever she got released 2021. um 2021 yeah from the years 20 2008 to 2021 britney spears did not have control over her own money she literally legally could not while she may have had some sort of say in it legally it was not her she was never the final say ever mm. and that's kind of where I find a lot of things really suspect with the conservatorship, no matter what it was. She just was never the person signing off. So so in conclusion, the Britney Spears license, despite not being anywhere near the popularity it once was, is still certainly a great study of celebrity endorsement. Just the effect of celebrity, even if they aren't particularly endorsing it, product extension and product curation. I do wish we had more information on whether these products really were helping Spears herself, as we have been led to believe all the way back to the initial PR article from Elizabeth Arden. Because really without that, it feels like only half of the business story is truly available to be understood. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please do like and subscribe for more like this. If you're interested in fashion, I also have a fashion channel under Stitch, so please go there and check that out. And a special thank you to my patrons over on Patreon, some of whose names are on the screen now. All content used in this video is done so in accordance with the principles of fair use. However, if you have any concerns, please contact me directly at contact at understitch.co.uk.